Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at control and provisioning of wireless access points. We'll be discussing an introduction to that control and provisioning for wireless access points, Mac architecture, DTL, DTLS encryption, and then finally, Flex Connect access points. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. CAPWAP stands for Control and Provisioning of Wireless Access Points. This is an IEEE standard that allows you to have a wireless LAN controller, one central point of administration that can tr control multiple access points in different wireless LANs. That one wireless controller communicates with each access point, does the configuration, and you can do one access point at a time or you can do a whole bunch of them at a time and it also controls how the wireless lands are what the ssids are what the security on them and then it also help it controls that flow of data between the wired network and the wireless devices capwap is made for wireless land controllers and lightweight access points so it's those access points that don't have an operating system on them they don't have any configurations on them it's those access points that need a controller to be told what to do what it does is it provides a way for that wireless LAN controller to communicate with lots of access points to control lots of those access points now, lightweight access points don't provide a lot of security for the controlling part of that and even necessarily for the data being transferred to those access points what CAPWAP does is it adds in DLTS, Datagram Transport Layer Security. It, it encapsulates, it encrypts some of that data so that way it can't be sniffed out on your network. We, we set aside UDP ports here, 5246 and 5247. That is set aside to encapsulate and forward that traffic between wireless access, or sorry, the wireless LAN controller and your lightweight access points. And that's the ports we use, so you gotta make sure that's open on your network. And it operates both over IP version four and IP version six to send this data. PAMPWAP splits the media access control sort of by function. The access point gets some, the wireless LAN controller gets some. The access point, what the access point does is it sends out those beacons and probes. It responds to clients wanting to get into our system, wanting to know what our SSID and the authentication. The access point also handles the packet acknowledgements and retransmissions. That, that was part of that process when we do the re, uh, ready to send, clear to send part. They, the last step there was sending acknowledgement. The access point handles that. The access point also says, okay, we, we've got a lot of data too fast for us to send out our wireless. We're going to queue up the data here on the access point, And we also do quality, or quality of service on that access point. The access point also handles our layer two data encryption and data decryption. If you have any encryption happening at layer two, that's what's going to handle it is, it, is the access point. The wireless LAN controller, they handle some other functions. They handle that authentication whether it's a pass key or pass phrase, pre-shared key, whether it's, it's authenticating against some sort of different server. It handles the association and reassociation of roaming clients. Centrally stored that data allows them to connect into different access points as needed. Frame trans, translation to other protocols. And so if we have to change from one protocol to another, our wireless LAN controller does that. And it also is a termination point for traffic on our wired network and basically what that means is it that it changes the wireless traffic into a wired traffic so it can go across our network i hope you're liking this episode on control and provisioning of wireless access points if you have the time please leave a comment and let me know what you think about the control and provisioning of wireless access points you can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form DTLS is additional security 
beyond what the traditional lightweight access point and the wireless LAN controller does. It's additional security. And how this works is basically there's two CAPWAP channels. One is the control channel, one is the data channel. That control channel is how is that access point, access point being configured? How are the settings getting there? How, do, how does that wireless LAN controller tell that wireless access point how to configure itself? That's that information that goes through that CAPWAP control channel. CAPWAP data is where all the data sent. That's, that's when you're connected with your smartphone to an access point and you open up a web page, all that data from that web page goes through that CAPWAP data web page. Now, encryption for the CAPWAP control channel, that is encrypted by default. So it's enabled by default. And so all that data between the access point and the wireless LAN controller for configuration, that is encrypted. Now, if you want to encrypt all of your data using this DTLS, you have to buy a separate license in the Cisco world. You have to go out and buy a separate license. And so it is disabled by default. In order to enable it, you have to go and buy a, a license. Now that license will allow you to encrypt your traffic. You as the administrator need to decide how important is my data? How much do I want my data to be encrypted? Is it worth X many dollars? Some people will say yes, some people will say no. Maybe you have other technologies taking care of that encryption. Maybe you have a VPN server and your corporate security policy, policy says, anytime you connect into the corporate network, you will use the VPN to make sure your data is secure. And so it's up to you, you and your company, to figure out if you need that additional security, that additional encryption on your CAPWAP data channel. Flex Connect is another tool that makes administrators' lives a little bit simpler. What Flex Connect does is it allows you as the administrator to configure an access point over a WAN link. In this diagram right here, we have a WAN. So somewhere, somehow we have our WAN link, a serial connection, it, you're going through an ISP to configure it, corporate office, branch office, Typically, you just separated physically by a distance. And you can configure in that branch office an access point without having to deploy another wireless LAN controller there. You can use the LAN, the wireless LAN controller in your corporate office to configure across the WAN that access point in the branch office. Hopefully making your lives as an administrator a little simple. Yes, there is an additional licensing fee for that from Cisco, but that way you don't have to have an on-site tech. You don't have to have somebody with technical skills at that branch office. How much is your time? Is it worth you driving out two hours to fix an access point for 30 minutes and then drive two hours back? How much is your time worth? Now, Flex Connect works in two modes. One is the connected mode. That's where that CAPWAP control channel is established and everything is working fine, just like it's supposed to. But in our world, the real world, sometimes it goes down. Sometimes that CAPWAP channel, that control channel goes down, your WAN connection goes down. You don't have connectivity between your corporate office and your branch office anymore. That's when this Flex Connect access point is going to switch into standalone mode. And what went away here is this control channel went away. And so this access point is going to be in a, basically a sort of a minimum operation mode. What we do here is it will switch client data. So it'll still act like a switch. It'll allow wireless clients to connect into the wired network and it will perform some authentication locally for your wireless client. So when this laptop tries to connect in, there'll be some authentication that happens. WEP, WPA, WPA2. Hopefully you have some pre-shared keys they can use or certificates. That'll work, but you can't do any of the control features if you had that CAP WAP control channel up and running. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on control and provisioning of wireless access points. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. 
please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.